Hi, this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. And everyone, welcome. It is finally summer. And with summer, we have endless events happening all over our community. And I have the good fortune to have a local group that does a great deal of good things for our communities. And you wouldn't think of it to get their name. It's the General Federation of Women's Clubs, and they are really a community service organization. And I have with me two guests. Sue and Tracy, who are here from South County, Rhode Island, and we're going to talk with them about what does the women's clubs do, and then talk about some special event they have that's coming up next month. So welcome, ladies. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us, of course, I butchered your name, perhaps. Tell us what the, uh, the women's clubs do. I think of it as something, or maybe my viewers as well, think of it as something like the Junior League, but you're not... You're not junior leaguers. Uh, no, we're our, we support um, community nonprofits. Uh, we're committed to the arts, conservation, education, and social services. Um, we have one fundraiser a year, and and it's to give back to the community is what we have fun doing it. But that's our basic mission. And it's a uh, general federation of women's club. Women's club of South County is our particular uh, right branch. Right. <laughs> and you're in Narragansett, Rhode Island? Uh, we're, yes, Narragansett, South Kingston. Um, we have uh, some westerly people. Mm -hmm. we, we give back to all of South County, which is what um, our name is. Okay, that's great. And uh, I can ask Sue, when did you start to get involved with this? Not club? all that long ago, about four years ago. Oh, okay. I became involved. And um, a friend of mine asked me to join, and I always thought that the women's club was this social group, and I thought maybe perhaps more elitist, and um, it is anything but that. We're a wonderful group of people from across the board uh, who work hard to provide service to the community. Mm -hmm. um, we do have our fun moments, um, and we're not limited to allowing certain people in or uh, other people are not kept out. Everyone right. is welcome to join us. But you do have to be a woman. We have, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. And we've been given some um, static over that at times. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if the, uh, what is it, if the uh, Westerly Yacht Club can still only have men. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> we have to have our counterpart, yes. right? Exactly, exactly. Actually, that's how our, the uh, General Federation of Women's Clubs began. Oh. Our founder, who um, was Jane Cunningham Crowley, was not allowed into an event in um, New York that divide, that um, denied her entrance to um, a, uh, a, a press club conference with Charles Dickens. Oh. <laughs> and she was not allowed in. Because she was a woman. Because she was a woman. And so in 1890, she established the Women's Club, and, and the That's rest is history. history, right, mm -hmm. right. Now, this is actually an international organization. It is. 18, 18 countries are involved. We have 3,200 clubs mm -hmm. and over 100,000 members worldwide. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Now, you were telling me off camera that uh, you give out uh, funds to s groups in the community. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We give that? out grants. We give out scholarships. Um, some of the uh, westerly area ones that we're giving out, it's given out under our Grow Hope Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, we give to the Granite Theater. Okay, I'm we a member. We give to Westerly Chorus, mm -hmm. the Warm Shelter, mm -hmm. Johnny Cake Center. Right, um, right. Women's Resource Center, mm. uh, the Welcome House of South County. It's a lot of different organizations. We have scholarships that we give to. Um, we look for women with single mothers that are trying to improve their lives and go right. back to college. Right. Um, we have actually one of our members is a recipient of oh. one of those scholarships who now works for Brightview Commons, which is one of the places we have our meetings. Oh, how lovely, how lovely. Now anyone can join, right? Anyone. anyone. And you don't have to, you don't really have to be a Rhode Island resident. No, you don't have to be a Rhode Islander and you don't need a sponsor. Mm -hmm. you just, um, and you just, you have some contact information that we'll put on the screen. Yeah. And people can just um, go ahead and, yes, and get can. you on the on the on your website and get some information about mm -hmm. or, who or you call are. the club's number. Or call the club's number and and get somebody uh, to tell mm -hmm. to welcome you to the next meeting. You meet uh, monthly. We do yes. pretty much. Not pretty every much. single month, but mo I think it's. We a, take the summer yeah. off and, okay. the month, and the month of February. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and that's a little bit of a um, not total truth either, yes. because we work very hard in July because of our fundraiser. Oh, okay. So we yes. take August off. Yes. 
and we take February off. So. Yes. Yeah. And who would you say classically is uh, members of your group? Uh, women, what? The, the, are they young women, old women? Well, uh, who is it? 40s to 95. Oh, I like that. I like <laughs> yes. that. Exactly. Yes. Uh, we have a 95-year-old woman who is one of our hardest workers oh, getting ready for our luncheon. She's amazing. Yes. 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 And we'd love to see more of the younger people, but that's often a problem because a lot of those people are working full time. Mm -hmm. And so to find time to do philanthropic things is, is difficult. Tough. Yes. But we have different levels of participation. So mm -hmm. some people give lots of hours and some people mm -hmm. give small amounts of time but every little bit is helpful right now do you meet during the during the middle of the day is it a luncheon meeting we've actually switched it off because we do have um, members that work full-time okay so we do an afternoon meeting one month the following month we do an evening meeting and we ah, switch off our okay. schedule that way just to open it up and accommodate everyone oh okay and typically where do you meet we meet either in um, the Narragansett Community Center okay. or the Brightview Commons, which is in South Kingstown. Okay. Um, we're looking at um, also meeting in Westerly, depending on how many more Westerly members that we actually get. And then we've had our um, luncheon meeting at Westerly Restaurant. So. Okay. Well, we have some. Yes. As a Westerly <laughs> resident, I can tell you, we got some great restaurants to choose from. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 so the. Um, so your particular group, I mean, what, what gets people interested in, in joining your group? What, what do you say to the audience Well, out I there? think one of the things is there's a lot of women that want to give back to the community, mm -hmm. and they're very involved with the kids, you know, PTO or the kids' sports teams. Right. So once the kids are out of school, they're looking for something to do. Mm -hmm. And our club is one of the big appeals, especially because you can still be working full time, right? You know, and get involved in the club, or um, people that retire early or you know retire at the normal retiring age, whatever that is, right? Uh, can join our club and participate. Okay. And there, right. there's different things that they can do to help out the club. So give us examples. Um, we have one of the things we have is rolling library, mm -hmm. and one of the libraries there's shut-ins that can't get mm -hmm. to the library. And they give the librarian their requests, and the women in our group will bring those books to um, the oh. shut-ins. Oh, how nice. How absolutely nice. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? You know, some other uh, um, examples of stuff that you do on a regular basis? We have an essay contest, uh -huh. which is a middle school. They are told that uh, if you were a company and you had to um, give a uh, an award, what company would you pick and why would you pick it okay and these the the fifth graders and the, the essays they write are just adorable we have a whole committee of women who actually read like 200 and something wow. essays and pick the winners oh okay that... and then the, then we have a the um the fifth graders actually come when we give them their awards and they actually hand the check to their charity of choice. Oh, isn't that nice? So. That's that is quite nice. Mm. And I so you are a dues uh, dues organization. Um, it's only sixty dollars for the mm. dues, and that takes care of the whole year. Okay, so it's it's a relatively small amount, and get yes. lots to, lots of opportunity to to mm. meet and do things in the community. Yes. So uh, the. The whole thing is get people, get more people. You're always looking for members, I would assume. Yes, we are always looking for members. And it, no age requirement. You have to be at least 18, or is it, or is there? There any? is really no, There's no requirement. age requirements. In the old days, I guess there used to be a junior group. Okay. And now there, it's just the women's group. So, so anybody can anybody, anybody can join. Yes. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Now uh, you talked about a fundraiser. The July luncheon is that? That's the that July is your 15th, annual fundraiser. It's our Currently, it's the only fundraiser we have, so okay. everybody puts our concentration on that. All right. Um, there's actually, it's pretty close to 60 women that have been involved. We started in October. Oh, my. And the fundraiser is July 13th. July so that's, 13th? That way, the, the different women, some women are involved from October right till July 13th. Some just do, you know, little things to help out, so it's it's open to, it's a book and author luncheon. Okay. We have three um, authors who have published a, a few books and they talk about their books. We have um, Michaela Johnson, who's um, on the road show, and she's our MC this year. Oh, very nice, so. very nice. And, and let me ask, um, what, what, um, what, make, what criteria do you use in terms of choosing the authors that you, you pick? We actually have a committee. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things that they look at. They don't want self-published authors, they want 
because mm -hmm. it's a lot easier for us to deal with a regular publisher to get the books. Okay. Uh, sometimes we do themes. This year, all three authors happen to be historical fiction. Ah, okay. Uh, sometimes okay. we do children's books. Um, mm -hmm. We won't even think about next year until after July 13th. Absolutely. But then the committee's going to get moving on. The okay. committee's already set up for next year. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, sounds like a good... Can you describe the books for us? Uh, yes, um, we actually have the three books. We have Michelle Hoover's Bottomland, and this book book is set in um, World War One. It's a, um, the anti-German uh, sentiment is involved in the book. There's a little mystery in there where two um, daughters happen to disappear and that's the mystery behind the book. Right, right. Uh, the Muralist is uh, written by Barbara Shapiro and that's set in World War Two. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a story about the birth of an abstract expressionist and the inner workings of the New York art scene. Okay. Then we have a Georgia, a novel about Georgia O'Keeffe. That ah. one is written by Dawn Tripp. Okay. And it's all about her romance with the uh, photographer Alfred Stilglitz. So it's, yes, it's all, yes, 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 famous uh, all historical yes. fiction type books. Right, and very. Um, different, different time periods. Different time periods, um, and yes. Different times of people. The um, the World War One one is is it set in America or is it set in? Uh, no, it's set in it's set in America. So oh, okay, it's, very good. Um, German um, immigrants. Okay, and the anti-German uh, backlash that occurred in this country during World War One. Yes. 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 Right. Right. Two of the authors, um, Barbara Shapiro and um, Dawn Tripp, have been authors at prior book and author luncheons. Oh. And you know, one of the things that's always an interesting thing, sometimes you get people who are wonderful writers and they can speak, but they're mm. not entertaining. These two are pretty powerful. Uh, so, as entertainers. Yeah, as entertainers. Yes, so yes, we are yes. very excited to have them back. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and so what, what if the committee starts with what? What happens? People just come up and have ideas about which uh, writer they might We have with? a lot of suggestions that they oh, look okay. at, plus they um, do their own research, which I, they've actually started looking at, at some of the authors already. So I see. That's great. Yeah. And what made you decide that uh, an author luncheon was going to be the thing that you were going to use as a fundraiser? Well, actually, it's our 17th annual. Okay. So I was not involved 17 years ago, so I'm right. not right sure None of you, what either one of you. started right. it. Right. But it works. Okay. Um, every cent of the profits from this mm -hmm. book and author luncheon goes into the grants and the scholarships, giving back to the community. So it's it's been working fine. It's at the Dunes Club in Narragansett, which is just a lovely mm -hmm. place. Oh, right in the on middle the water. of July. Yes. And it's yes, yes. just it it couldn't be better. It's ah. just such a nice venue and. It's just the wonderful, um, I don't even want to call it a ladies' lunch because we do sometimes have men that come to it, especially these authors are a draw. Mm -hmm. uh, men have enjoyed this book. I went to see um, Dawn Tripp on an Authors on Main in Wakefield, and there were quite a few men in the audience. Right, right. So. That's great that yeah. it attracts that. I just think that um, the, the, the interrelationship between writing and authors, this is all fiction. Do you ever do anything with nonfiction? Um, we have in we the past have. had a couple of nonfiction. Yes. It hasn't been the most popular ah. of venues, and part of our, mm. you know, the whole thing is to get as many people there as possible, of and course. to also have people purchase books. Yeah. And um, that just hasn't seemed to be a super big draw. Mm. We've done things with recipe books, right? Um, which are obviously isn't typically nonfiction, but right. and they have been usually. Um, people who are from our area. That is one of the criteria generally too, is we try to get a lot of authors from the area. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen all the time, but we mm -hmm. do try to do local authors um, and promote a lot of their work as well. So that's another one of the criteria, at least it traditionally has been. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and have you ever done other kinds of fundraisers in the past? Uh, in the past, mm -hmm. before our time, they've done a... Um, it, uh, it was the like arts, a... Um, it's something they did at the high school. Yeah, they, they would have vendors come in yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, sell their goods for, with all kinds of artwork and crafts and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And each one would obviously buy a table, and that's where the money came from. And it was a, a fairly big event. They did fairly well with that, but yeah. this is much more 
uh, it allows us to do a lot more for the community. Oh, okay, okay, because you because try to involve community writers, mm -hmm. presumably. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and uh, so that's more of, a, of a yeah. interest. How many people typically come to an event like this? Um, close to 300. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's great. Yes. That's wonderful. So you're still obviously looking for... People. We still have some seats open, yes. Right, right. So uh, again, tell us the, the date. It's July 13th. It's 11.30 to 2.30. Um, there's a lot of information. It's on the screen. But okay. if you just uh, Google Book and Author Rhode Island, okay. that will actually pop up the oh, Eventbrite okay. on how to get the tickets. Okay, that's great. And you can buy your tickets online? You can buy them online. So yes, we're so sophisticated enough in. to get all that stuff done? Yeah, if you buy them online, you get your confirmation number and you know you're all set. And oh, okay. We have a lot of people giving us tables of eight or tables of ten. Oh, okay. So. Do usually, is the uh, is the audience uh, usually companies? Do they come and they buy, buy tables? We or? have corporate sponsors. Okay. And depending on how much their sponsorship is, is how many free tickets they get, they usually, if they get two free tickets, they'll get a book of 10 anyway, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so. Typically, who, is, who would be your uh, sponsors for an event like this? Uh, we have, oh, uh, let's see. Oh, you threw me off on that. I, I, yeah, <laughs> local I businesses, right? Yes, oh yeah, definitely local, local businesses. businesses. Local businesses. We have, um, don't worry about oh, it. Oh, that's a whole different committee, but. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't um, worry about it. I was just curious in terms have, of who, who would be supportive of you. Obviously, they know about your organization. We have Bank Rhode Island. Okay. Our biggest, uh, one of our biggest is Brightview Commons, which is actually where we have one of the um, meetings, and that's um, assisted living facility. Oh, okay, um, okay. We have uh, banks. We have individuals um, that give. We have... Um, physical therapy companies, doctors, lawyers. Oh, that's interesting. You got a lot of health care. Uh, a lot of health care, yes. which is really... Is that because, uh, probably because you're a woman's group and they're thinking, they, yes. you know, maybe there's a some kind of connection. Maybe you'll use their service in the future. Well, we've also been very helpful to our local ho hospital, Hospitals. South County Hospital, ah, and they have yes. applied for many of our grants, and we have... Right help them in many ways as well. So I think there's a little bit of reciprocity going on. Yes, there. yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Because then you know that they oh, just opened a, uh, a little... The cancer yes. center, oh, the right? uh, walk-in the, center. Yes, yes. A, yes, a big center in Wesley as they expand yes. their yes. Uh, footprints as it is. Yeah. Now it's South County Health instead of health South County and, Hospital, yes. Yeah, health yes. and wellness or something. Yeah. You know, that's, right. that's, the, that's the, new, uh, yes. the new words that they use. Um, so tell me, you started this 17 years ago. You, neither one of you were actually involved in it, but mm -hmm. it was this idea that um, somehow writing and authors would bring people to your event and then a lot of pe more people would show yes. up. And typically is the, um, um, all the money you raise there, then you turn around and give it to Back to local, the community. Local yes. charities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have a committee that decides on Yes, these? it's an actual, it's a Grow Hope committee and there is, that's one of the things that um, women who join the club can do, be part of the Grow Hope and they actually sit down and review all the applicants um, and decide where to actually disperse the money. Do you have an application period or some kind yes, of deadline? Yes, uh, June 1st is usually the deadline. We, you know, put it in all the local papers that applications are available. And what's the uh, criteria that you use in dispersing the grant money? I think that each year the, I am not positive about this, but I think the Grow Hope Committee sets mm -hmm. what, um, what its criterion are going to be, right? And then they de they disseminate the money accordingly. Okay. I, and I think that yeah. they decide that, and they always bring their suggestions back to the club, and the club votes on them, and yes. pretty much usually accepted. Of They've course. done the work, right? But uh, everyone has a say in. So they, there's a formal application process. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you fill out some papers and uh, yes. tell people what you apply you're for do. the grant, right? And typically, what's the size of the grant? They range from about. Five hundred to, to several thousand, yeah, depending yeah, on what thousand. the need is, what the request is, yes. and how much money is available. Right, yeah. right. Great. You know, I don't know that if you know this, but I actually uh, am a grants writer, and uh, I I do I give seminars on grants writing and fundraising. So I ask these questions because I'm I'm actually very curious because yes. 
uh, some groups may know about you because they've been in the community a long time, mm -hmm. and then perhaps there are other that don't that yes. don't know that this is a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. for them to at least investigate, yes. uh, if nothing else, um, because of course Johnny Cake Center and Warm Center these mm -hmm. have been around for a long time. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, but there might be some other. Now, one of the criteria I would imagine is that they have to be a nonprofit. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So it can't be a you know the rec and park department of a town. No. No. Right. No. It has to be a nonprofit yes. organization. And last year, I believe I had this right that all, a, a lot of our, uh, maybe even a majority of our um, grants went to the Westerly area. Really. So yeah. we really would love to have some members join us because they can give us feedback as to other areas that might need our help or get it, the word out to other people so that sure. they can apply for grants as well. Right, right. And most of the grants, I, I, if I'm listening properly, well, the Granite Theater, of course, I know is, of course, a, mm -hmm. a local theater that has been mm -hmm. around for several a years. Time. A long time. Great. And they renovated their theater. Mm -hmm. I am a subscriber. Mm -hmm. I go to all of their plays and it's a wonderful institution right there smack in the middle of, uh, West Ma right. right in the smack in the middle of town. And of course, when they always do the Shakespeare plays in the middle of the summer, that's wonderful as well. Yes, that's a different. That's a different group. That's a colonial. Oh, group. I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. That's right. That's the colonial group. Oh, oh. And I think this year they're actually, as far as I know, they may not be actually doing any Shakespeare in the park. But that's okay. That's another what little. But, but they little, could too apply yes. for grants. Oh, they have applied. For, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And we do have some some other little groups. Uh, do you accept little groups from say the Groton Mystic area? Or is it strictly going to be Rhode Island? Well, currently it's only been Rhode Island because mm -hmm. we don't even have any members, you know, but if it got to a point where we grew mm -hmm. and we did have Connecticut members, then that's something we would consider. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, and uh, the application process, is it, a, is it a tedious thing or is it a kind of a little thing to do? No, they just fill out the form. And, oh, it's just and a form. Yes. Right. And do, do they have to have a, um, um, uh, do they publicly come and present their proposal or they have nothing like that? No, no, they don't. They don't go before the committee and talk. They just send in their application, and the committee, if they had questions, they would call them up and say, you okay. know, we just have a question about this. How does this work? Right. That type of thing. Uh, the, the number of uh, gr uh, grantees did they change from year to year? I mean, have you gotten some outliers, or the the things change from time to time? Every year, there's somebody new. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of them that are definitely new. I say that because the you know the, there's a new push and it's it's a real need is this issue of uh, heroin, and uh, I know that there's Westerly, I don't know that it has more deaths or more occasions mm -hmm. than anybody else in the in South County, but certainly there's been a new push on the part of the police and the schools and the community to actually bring this to the public's uh, yes. attention and stuff like that. So I was just curious um, since you. Um, have received the applications if there's been anything, you know, like this. I know some of the clergy from Wesley's become involved in this mm -hmm. in a kind of um, try to stem the tide of what yes. used to be thought of as a, a ghetto problem, really, just the, mm -hmm. in the inner city and, oh, my God, look, what, look what's happening. We've made it ourselves. It's a, a mess that we created, created not yes. you and me personally, but it's a mess that we created, right. and now we have to, you know, clean it up. So I was curious about that, because I know that um, when you deal with the banks, they all have foundations, mm -hmm. and every year they sort of change based on, you know, whatever they think is the tide. Yes. You yes. know, so there was a time, and it's, it's, it's actually kind of terrible, but it is what happens, is that, you know, two years ago, everybody was concerned about the homeless, right? So there was money for the homeless. Well, the homeless hasn't dis disappeared, really. But it's, it's, it's just... It's not the in thing. It, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like becomes trends and things like that. Yes. So the, the new trend, which is really addressing a serious problem, not to diminish right. the seriousness right. of it, is, is, yes. is now, this, now it's heroin. So that's, that's the new serious problem mm -hmm. of the day. Some of the old ones didn't disappear. And of course, but you're dealing with groups that yes. address that anyway, the Warm Center, Johnny K maybe indirectly, yes. um, not necessarily directly. And a lot of times when we give our money out, we do try to spread it amongst the different um, the groups, the arts, the, yes. yeah, our four categories that you mentioned earlier, the yeah. arts. And, uh, and uh, have, you, do you, have you seen an increase in the number of applicants? Have Actually, we haven't. We mm -hmm. stepped up our publicity last year ah. because we 
didn't think we were out there enough for people to actually know that that's one of the things we're doing. So we're working on that more to publicize uh -huh. who we are and what we're doing. Yes. Um, to get um, more so the applicants. people know, you know, send in your application and you have a right. chance. Right. And even in our thing. area of scholarships, which we give out generally to um, usually women who um, the criteria are women, I believe, that are trying to go back to school, mm -hmm. uh, may be single, may not be, is, may not be single, but mm -hmm. they, they have a need for scholarship help. Yes. Right. And this year, I believe there were only maybe one or two that applicants applied. that really? applied for the scholarship. Wow. So, is that also a June 1st deadline? That I'm not sure of. Yeah. Mm. So we have different committees for all these first. things. Absolutely, right? you know, right? absolutely. You know, that's typical of women's groups, right? You yes. divide the labor. <laughs> the well, thank labor. goodness. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Recognizing that one person can't do everything. Yes. Right. So if actually you don't know, but can people still be applying for this? Well, they can certainly um, contact us either right. on, by the phone number or on our website right. and ask for information. Right. And if the deadline has already passed, then the deadline is coming up again for next year. They should, exactly. and that's and they should what, be getting ready yes. for next year. So the fundraiser is, Would be once we finish with that. the fundraiser, we know mm -hmm. how much money we actually have to give back to the community. But, so if somebody wanted to contact us, we would certainly let them know the procedure and what the deadlines were going to be, yes. And, and we have a, a fairly hefty scholarship that we give out Actually, it's um, there's a family, the Louis Vecino Smith family, that she was their mother. I believe it was their mother was a, a member of the women's club, and wow. when she left, she left us with an endowment through um, the Rhode Island Rhode Foundation. Island Foundation. Mm -hmm. And yes. so we choose someone to give that money to every year, and it's it's quite hefty. So even though that isn't from our fund specifically, right. we, we do manage that money. Oh, okay, okay. So so there, not only do we have the scholarships that we give out. But we also award the scholarship in the family name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know that the um, with great support from who, um, Chuck Royce, who was the um, Person of the Year for the Wesley Chamber, which is now called Ocean Community, um, with his uh, great push, the uh, Westerly is going to have a satellite of the uh, of the community college. Oh. And they're currently yes. building that so mm -hmm. one of my suggestions might be is to to kind of contact someone involved with that to let them know and let the college know that the scholarships, that the available. scholarships yes. are available I mean they must yes. have some kind of uh, financial aid or placement officer mm -hmm. and that would become uh, I mean if they're in the community that's about as easy to get to yes it's a lot easier to get to than to go to depending on where you live mm -hmm. to, to go up to Providence correct right, or, right. Um, yes. or, and especially if you have a family that you have to, you don't want to have that time commuting. You want to right. be with your family. Right. So this is a, you know, a new idea to kind of, um, well, basically push by, by economic interests in terms of having a workforce. Yes. Uh, that has the skills to go forward yes. and to really. Um, That's a great make, idea. Make so it, needed to have a down here. We yes. do. We need something yes. down here. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the expansion of uh, electric boat, both mm -hmm. in Connecticut and in Rhode Island. Um, there is a need for specialized uh, skilled workers. Yes, skilled workers, yes. and it's no reason why uh, you know a woman who's forty years old, who's raised two kids, can't learn how to do something entirely different. Anything she can learn, anything. Exactly yes. right. And there was a wonderful uh, article in the paper. I can't remember whether it was the Sun or the Day, and they were highlighting one young woman who um, you know w wouldn't have thought about it. this was some kind of manufacturing. Thing. Mm -hmm. And it is a skill that she is going to learn, and, and, and that's that's wonderful. That's yes. an important thing. So it I is. think, uh, and these are kinds of really good jobs. So it, it's a great idea, to, not that you can push people, but to let women know help them and help them to yes. that there are all these exciting mm -hmm. you know job opportunities out there, mm -hmm. and you know Electric Boat is complaining that it simply doesn't have yeah. a workforce that's good enough, and of course then it dampens the enthusiasm to bring um, foreigners into the country to take jobs when if you have a skilled American right. workforce right. then there there's no there's less need to go outside of the country to, to, That's true. to look for these people yes. and of course you know women um, have because of the circumstances more and more of them their salaries 
hold the family the together. Family. Yes. I mean, it, not only single moms, but just mm -hmm. in general, yeah. uh, women. You need a two-income family also. Yes, yes, because we don't yeah. live in a really cheap community. I mean, mm -hmm. it's expensive to live here, and it's gorgeous to live here, so we want people to stay yes. in the community. <laughs> And the way to do that is to make it possible mm -hmm. for them to have better jobs. So I commend you for your activities. Mm -hmm. And it is, um, certainly if people are listening, and if you want to then take this, um, this interview and bring it to the attention of the college, that, or more colleges, just to get the word out. Because sometimes it is the financial aid officer who perhaps needs to know that you yes. give out a scholarship, and it, the bigger one or even the smaller ones, mm -hmm. And that makes them aware of when the students, you know, students come in. And, Correct. Yeah, so there's my, uh, my, <laughs> my symbol full of <laughs> advice for those seeking uh, better employment opportunities. But it is, and I commend you for, for doing that because that's the kind of thing that really can change a person's life. Absolutely, absolutely. We've, and we've heard a couple of stories yes, about it, too. They've come to our mm -hmm. meetings and actually told them what our um, scholarship has done for them and their families. And I'm yes. sure it's just been monumental. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Changed their lives. Changed their lives, mm -hmm. yes. Literally changed yes. their mm -hmm. lives. And that's, and that's for you to be commended and A lot for. of times we will have them come back to speak to us. Yes. And last year a woman came back and she had the whole place crying. You oh, know, it was really heartwarming. Can you share with us a little bit about you know what she what she did and what she said? It's just she she works for um, a shelter program yeah. uh -huh. in South County, and uh, her her quote was, uh, "This scholarship came at a truly pivotal time in my life and gave me the funding to pursue my degree in social work." Uh -huh. And um, the, but the whole thing was very um, heartwarming. She had children. Uh, she her her husband had left, or I think Tracy. Yes, yeah. yes. And mm -hmm. um, she was really struggling to move forward. And now she has a wonderful job, and mm. she supports her family. She's become an extremely com uh, contributing member of mm -hmm. our um, community. So not only did we change her life, but in reality, we changed the community's life. Yes. It's much yes. further reaching than just yes. the one person. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Typically, do you know what people study when they, uh, when they take your scholarship funds? Um, they do usually tell us what they're getting their degree in. Okay. Um, and so. any sense of what that might be? Um, we have people that want to go into nursing, people that yes. want to go into social work. It's, right. it, it tends to be, be people women that type want to um, help the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So. Those seem to be like women's kinds of occupations, teacher, social worker, yeah. right? Right, nurses. Nurse. Actually, um, there was this one woman who her father had a, like a motorcycle shop. Oh, cool. And he oh, wasn't going right. to give his daughter oh. the company, you oh. know, because it was a girl. Yes. So she actually applied for a scholarship and we paid for her to go to school to get the skills and she opened up her own business. Oh, as a mechanic, as yeah. A mechanic. Oh, yes. it was that, amazing. That, yes. That's a great story. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, how, how can you, uh, see these are the kinds of things that people need to know. So mm -hmm. it's a, you know, you gotta go out there and publicize yes. all the good works that you do and to even highlight, um, you know, what's, what you what these things do in terms of helping the individual, yes. their family, and and the community, and that you were looking forward to getting more and more applicants to kind of maybe even broaden what you've already been able to and, accomplish. And that's one of the things that we've done with our club. We have people coming in from all walks of life, mm -hmm. and we have people now that have joined the club that are good at PR type things. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we realized is people don't know who we are and what we are doing. And that's one of the reasons so we're here. That's absolutely, why you know, absolutely. we're just trying to, to let spread, people know spread the that, word. you know, we, we just don't sit around and knit. We're actually, you know, doing things, helping the entire community, helping families, you know, helping everybody. Although, and, and we have can fun I, doing it. Although, let me just tell you, one of the other um, organizations in the state, they knit purple hats. Have you heard of the, um, I think it's called the Purple Crying, uh, I have it written down here somewhere, Period of Purple Crying Program? No. What they do is they knit hats in purple for women who are in the hospital with children they've just given birth, okay. and they give them a hat on their way out. Well, I don't think the women do, but the nurses might. And um, along with some literature about let 
you know, not shaking your baby oh. when they're crying. Yes. Oh. And how to deal with that. Put them down, walk away, take a breath. Ah. And so they knit these hats as a symbol mm. of the purple crying. Yes. Allow them just to cry. It's better to walk away with them crying. So yes. that's just another one of the oh. little things that we do. So some of the women's have, women have decided that they would take their little talent of knitting yes, and, and, do, it. and right. do that too. So there are lots of ways yes. that you can contribute to the right. works of women's yes, you know, It's wonderful. not just one thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's this just, yes, you know, and it's, it's a wonderful, so diverse. A wonderful just, stories that you yeah. have, wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. I think one of the problems we have when we're looking at South County and uh, mm -hmm. even this part is there are very few media outlets anymore, you know, here. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. they're in Providence or they're in yes. Hartford and New Haven, and so, you know, we do have some two newspapers. We have The Sun, mm -hmm. of course, and, and The Day here in, in this part. Um, we're independent newspapers, but the Providence Journal doesn't care about South County and doesn't do mm -hmm. very much. And yes. outside of the major, major events that occur, mm -hmm. um, certainly the television stations from Providence, they talk about, they're more likely to talk about Southeast Massachusetts. Yes, yes. this is than true. They are it South is, County. Yes. I mean, that's a continuing yes. complaint that I have myself, um, yes. that there's really so little mm -hmm. media attention. And we, mm -hmm. and we have, this incredible communities out here that do tremendous amount of stuff yeah. and mm -hmm. there's no way to kind of mm -hmm. toot your horn. So I'm very glad you came on the show because yeah. you can take this uh, this DVD and go ahead and broadcast yes. it wherever mm -hmm. you wish to put it on your Facebook uh, um, oh, we as a message <laughs> and, and just to get to get the word out because yeah. Thank um, you. Again, yes. people sing women's clubs. Oh my God, is that a garden club? Yeah. Is that yes. the junior league? Yeah. No, I'm not interested. I don't garden. You know, that kind of stuff. Right. Yes. The name, I think, drives some uh, maybe professional right. women away. Yes. They're thinking, yes. oh, this is completely inconsequential, which mm -hmm. is absolutely not true. Yeah. And you know what they say, you should never judge a book by its cover. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's our title. It's probably not totally uh, yeah. appropriate for all the good work we do. Yeah. And who knows, if you don't like the cover on this book, I'm sure you're going to like what's inside. Yes, <laughs> yes. So let's talk again, let's talk a little bit more about the, uh, about the luncheon. Um, I'd like to see, yeah, so now you can kind of take a look at the book, so if maybe we can get a little closer and uh, take a look at the covers. Um, tell us again um, the author and a little bit about the story. Uh, we have uh, Michelle Hoover's Bottomland, and it's a thought-provoking story of the Hess family following a wave of anti-German sentiment in Iowa after the end of World War I. Mm. Uh, and then the disappearance of their two daughters adds to a little intrigue to the to the whole story. So right, right. Um, and she's new to us. Mm -hmm. We haven't had her speak at, um, in any of our seventeen years. Um, the muralist with uh, Barbara Shapiro. Uh, that's the story of the birth of the abstract expressionist and the inner workings of the New York art scene. Mm -hmm. uh, it's set against the backdrop of the Depression on the eve of World War II. Mm -hmm. um, and she has spoken before and was a very, very uh, popular author. Great. And um, Georgia, a novel about Georgia O'Keeffe, Dawn mm. Tripp has been um, everywhere speaking about her and I have heard her and, and it was fascinating. Um, once I heard her speak, I, I wanted to get the book mm -hmm. right away because just the title, if you're not into the art world, you're thinking, well, you know, I don't really need to read about art, but the story behind it and, um, you know, Alfred Steele gets her husband, it's just, you know, unbelievable, so. Right, yeah, right. It's three really, really good books. And, and very different books. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm sure that's on purpose. Yeah. Yes. And, and are, do you focus only on women writers? No. Oh. Oh no. Okay. This year that happens it just happens. happens. Oh, I was just curious because yes. there happen to be three three yes. women yes. writers. But last year we had um, Peter Mandel who writes children's books. Oh, okay. And um, we often and have had... children's books authors. This yes. year we do not, but yes. we often do. And okay. They're very entertaining as well. Yeah. Well, and there's you probably have a lot of mothers and grandmothers in the audience. Yes. They want to buy <laughs> yes. the books for the kiddos, and yeah. I am a grandmother, so I'm always looking for books mm -hmm. to exactly. buy for the kiddos. You want to increase their little vocabulary. Vocabularies, yeah, right. make them readers. Yes, right. Uh, even if they don't want to be readers, you want to make them readers, yeah. <laughs> and that that kind of stuff. So exactly. that yes, I so the um, the committee meets and then they go through 
dozens and dozens of possibles. Yes. And yes. then they come out with, and, and with they, uh, they hash it out and you know, then they bring it to the club. And you know, our event has several components to it. We have an eating component, which yes. <laughs> they do, always do a very nice job with the meal. Right. We have raffle. We have a lot of items that are donated that we raffle off. Ah. And of course, all that money goes back into the community. Yep. Um, and we also have opportunities if people are interested in the club. We have um, opportunities for them to sign up uh, to perhaps join us at either a meet and greet, which is kind of like come learn about our club, or they might even decide to come to a meeting. And uh, so there are a lot of things going. You can buy the books. Yes, we mm -hmm. have the, the authors before mm -hmm. and after the luncheon signing mm -hmm. the books, right. which of course makes a great gift. Right, right. it does. Right. And of course, we have the speakers. So there's several components to the afternoon, and it goes fairly quickly, yes. and it's very enjoyable. Again. And you have the ocean view. What would be better? Yes. All right, so tell us again the date. It's July 13th, 11.30 to 2.30. At, at the Dunes, the Dunes e Club in Narragansett. Narragansett. All right. right, so good. So people know. And there are still tickets available. Yes, you there can are. Google Book an Author Rhode Island if you don't remember what it says up there on the screen. Right. And um, it'll come right up and give you all the information. So. That's good. And so people can sign up online, yes. purchase their tickets online. Mm -hmm. right. Or multiple tickets if they want to get a table of eight or a table of ten. Okay. And can they, um, can they if you're sold out, then they can't buy it at the door. That's There's correct. No, no, and they, none never. will be sold at the door. No, no none, tickets. No tickets. And then no we'll tell you, we usually door. sell out. We, okay. yes. No do. tickets yes. at the door. So people listening to this, you've got to go ahead and move quickly. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. by the end of the next week, get yes. your Yes, move yeah, quickly because you don't want to be locked out of this thing. No. Yes. Uh, number one, because it's probably going to be extremely entertaining. But number two, which is probably even more important, mm -hmm. is that you want to support a community, community. organization yes. that gives it out to the community. Yes. When women come and s decide to join, um, what do they tell you is their motivation for joining? Well, you know, uh, every year I give out um, a yeah. survey. We sur survey our membership. What are we doing well? What are we not doing right. so well? What do you like? What do you mm -hmm. like best? And there are always two things. They love the philanthropic component. They love mm -hmm. to help the community. And they just love being with other women. They're, yes. you know, just mm -hmm. being able to chit chat with them, make connections. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we get people that are joining that have moved into the area, oh, yes. that have retired in the area, and they don't know a lot of people, so it's a great opportunity to meet great people. Friendships. And friendships are, yeah. are uh, forged. And of course, the common denominator in all of that is the fact that people want to serve the community. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. you have a lot of, uh, you know, that's that right. seems to That's the one theme that, you know, everybody is the same. They want to give back. Right. Yeah. Do you have competing give back uh, issues? Like, the, is there a certain group that wants to do one kind of thing, and there are other groups that want to do different kinds of thing? Not well, well not the not ones so that all have their own cause get on the Grow Hope Committee okay. so that they have their say in who they want to give it to. So, because mm -hmm. yeah. you said that there were four components of yes, that. Yes, it's um, the arts, conservation, education, and, and um, social service. Okay. So. All right. And then each year it, it kind of fluctuates where the money might go. It's, it's pretty much spread between the between four Between the four, four, yes. four, the four criteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's great. And now you don't have a shortage, or you still are looking for more groups, though, right? Do you you looking for more groups to apply? As well as oh, it's always great to have had. applications. Yes, yes. it's yeah. also always nice if anyone wants to write a check and donate to the group mm -hmm. so that we can help support people even more. Yes. yes. Um, but uh, that that area has we do have a lot of applicants okay. in there. Yeah. The scholarships we yeah. uh, haven't had as many. But you know, it varies from year to year. Some years we have many, and some years we have fewer. Yes. So that's true. That's mm -hmm. that's true. But I think um, with the scholarships, I think if you were more active in terms of uh, dealing with the colleges themselves, yes, yes, that that would in fact um, uh, bring many more s potential students right. to your to your attention because. The financial aid officer is always sure. looking yes. to make sure kids find money can, for yeah, them, yes. can find money for yeah. it. And, and, and this thing in Westerly, I think, is going to oh, be that sounds, that's wonderful. a yes. big, big plus uh, for the community itself and uh, for, the larger, for the larger community to get, uh, you don't have to travel so far and mm -hmm. it's a, it will be a public institution. Yeah. So there's some you know, benefits for that for young, anybody who wants to go back to school. Right. So that's uh, that's wonderful. That's great. Um, what else can you tell us about the uh, the women's club so that we tarnish that terrible image of uh, women who knit 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's women who give back to the community and have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just so many different things. We have guest speakers at the... Um, at our meetings. At our meetings. Oh, good. Um, talking and about things going on um, that we didn't even know about. Right. You know. Right around our own area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some amazing programs going on out there. We just had the, um, the speakers about the veterans that have the issues. Yes, it's a new program in yeah. Rhode Island which supports veterans who have been in a little trouble with the law mm -hmm. and um, they basically get them into a program and they've had very good success uh, helping them get out of trouble. Mm -hmm. the, there's, a, all, a, there's a network of people that help everything from uh, drug counseling to mm -hmm. uh, social workers that work with these men and women who've given to our country right. and come back with um, disorders that don't allow them to function as uh, right. regular citizens until right. they get the help. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So it's been very successful. That was one. We also talked, there was a woman who came in and talked about uh, human trafficking. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Mm. oh, that must have been scary. You think, <laughs> can't be. And, right, well, and yeah. right around us, yes. all over. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. invisible. Yes. yes, that's a very, very serious issue. Yeah. Uh, you don't meet in the summer. In September, do you have your speaker all lined up? Uh, September is, well, this year we're celebrating our 15th year of our rolling library, yes. so we're oh. having a celebration this year okay. at that particular meeting. So um, actually we, ha we, ha we are getting speakers uh, lined up for October. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Tell us again what the library does because maybe people... Uh, Basically, they deliver books to people who are shut in mm -hmm. and uh, can't get to the library. And th the other thing that's very nice about it is these women go and deliver the books, but I think they also provide a little bit of company for people who can't yes. get out. Yes. So they, you know, they have to set aside. It's not just five minutes, knock on the door and drop off the book. They yes. provide conversation and yes. an ear. Yes, yes. Do you know if they also, uh, they go to, to shut-ins, do they go to places like nursing homes? Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Because my mother was at the um, Fairview, okay, uh, and and someone came mm -hmm. to to help her with uh, with books, and at that point, she needed the really large, oh, the large, large, large print, large yes. print. Mm -hmm. yes. and they were able to um, get that for to her. Pro yes, Wonderful. to provide, and even though she was mm -hmm. in a place where there were many others, it was a very nice conversation yes. and the people who deliver it usually have some knowledge of books and stuff so yes they can suggest you can, yeah yes. and they have an intelligent conversation yeah. um, I do know that they're they've trained for example postal um, delivery guy you know yes. the, the postal workers when they go to to constantly if they know there's yeah. an elderly Monitoring. couple or yes. an elderly single by themselves to see yes exactly yes. and if they can to make a verbal contact mm -hmm. and, uh, and to see to see people. It's important. Yes, yeah. it's it important is. for them to see people. Mm -hmm. And of course we live in a, an area where there has been, uh, certainly westerly, there is a, a, a large percentage of uh, elderly people yes. and, and your health can fail quickly. And the families are, don't live close anymore. No, they're spread no, all over the they're, place. they're far yeah. away. So these are kind of very yes. important uh, ventures. I, I do some and my husband do, do work with the uh, Southern Rhode Island Volunteers. Yes. And he has done f for several years medical transport. Okay. Yes. You know, getting people to the doctors yes. and the hospital and to the, to the pharmacy uh, and therapists of one kind or another. And, and many of these people, that's what happened to them. They raised their children in these communities mm -hmm. and there weren't enough jobs or opportunities. Yeah. So if they were well, if they were well educated, or they were in the military, they left, and uh, you know they ne they never came back. Yeah. So that that's an important role that that this kind of thing does. It's not necessarily delivering books. Right. But it's yeah. kind of you know kind of modern. I'm sure yeah. you know the people who do this come back and occasionally say, oh, you know, I think this person needs X, Y, and Z, or. Mm -hmm. They're worse off than I've seen them last time. I'm sure you get um, calls like that. Well, you know, it takes a community to raise a child. Mm -hmm. It also takes a community to care for our aging. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that everything that anyone can do on a daily basis or yeah, through their work helps. or as a philanthropic group yeah. 
is a wonderful thing. Right. Well, this is what this is the kind of image that you then want as the as a woman's club to have projected out to the public that yeah. you know you are actively involved in the community at all levels from the little as you're saying little babies yeah. leaving the hospital mm -hmm. to um, to to the elderly delivering delivering books. So it's a an inco incredible range range of services that you are yeah. providing to the community and you're giving out money. Yeah. We're giving out yes. money. And the more members we have, the, the more, more we can do. Can right. Because <laughs> I'm sure from your um, yes. from the fee the fee that you charge for just becoming a member is then channeled into these different kinds of activities. So you know yes. outside of feeding them when whenever the meeting is then yes. the rest of it the rest of it goes to to charity work. Our our dues are actually, actually uh, operational. Oper yes. So none of the money that we earn goes mm -hmm. to the operations At of all. the organization. Right. right. That's pure that's what we pay for. We mm -hmm. pay to run our group. Yes. Right. So um, that's where our dues money really goes. Mm -hmm. And then anything that we raise at book and author or any right. other uh, activity right. goes to the scholarships, to the Grow Hope community, um, a committee or mm -hmm. um, the scholarships. Yeah, we have the, the two separate School checking accounts yeah. just to make oh, sure that okay. the fundraising account is we totally We don't cross separate. the border. And yes. Right. Now you are a registered nonprofit yourself. Yes, we are. Yes. We're a 501 Three right, C. right. Yes. So that uh, so you have to be careful. So people yeah. actually who give donations to you then get a tax deduction. Yes, yes they do. So they that's do. So also all, another yes. thing for people to yeah. To all the know. raffle donations that we've had, they're all they get their little receipt, so they have it for their taxes. And, and, right. and actually, if they purchase a ticket to this, part of that is yeah, half of it ta tax is deductible. A tax oh, deduction. okay. Well, yes. that's good for people to mm -hmm. know. Yes, definitely. Are you still looking for auction items? Um, oh, always. Always. it's just a raffle. Okay. But um, if anybody has anything, we have a lot of restaurant um, gift certificate type right. things, and then uh, people are actually giving us items. We're um, raffling off a lobster. Oh. <laughs> but um, yes, they can they can call me at four zero one the two eight seven four three nine two number if okay. they have an item that All they right. would the like to. All right, the one that's on the on the uh, screen. On the screen, yes. Yes, if yes. you have any. Uh, and what are you looking for? You're looking for restaurants who might hear this to give you gift certificates. What what else are you looking for? Absolutely, gifts. Any, any anything that anyone is willing to. We have them to. from grocery stores. Uh huh. Um, we have them from you know all sorts of um, places plus actual items. Um, we have a watercolor, we have um, uh, see photographs, mm -hmm. just all sorts of really, really neat things that are being raffled off. So, right. And if someone can't come to the event or they're interested in supporting our work, they can mm -hmm. also make a donation to the club. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just a, just just a, a plain just old a, yeah. check. <laughs> yeah, send a check, a check in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, if people wanted to send a check in the mail, where would they send it? Um, they would send it to our P.O. box. Oh, good. Good. People listening to this. And they get out to GFWC, WCSC, uh, oh and they can God. send okay. it to P.O. Box 5684, Wakefield, Rhode Island, 02880. Say it one more time. Um, P.O. Box 5684, Wakefield, Rhode Island, 02880. Very and good. the letters that we rattled off at the beginning are on the screen, and they are the letters from what you're seeing in the general. top two lines. Right. So the General right. Federation so of Women's Clubs, Women's Club of South County. Yes. Right. Sorry for that mouthful. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. But you are obligated to give us the whole thing. Yes. 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 But they can abbreviate it on the checks. We can. With oh, just okay. the letters. Yes. Just, <laughs> just the, the letters. letters. Just the letters. So that's wonderful. So people who are listening and had no idea what you do, yes. um, you know, might want to give you... Uh, a donation. A, a donation. Yes. Do you do any other kind of uh, looking for donations? I mean, currently uh, the book and author luncheon is, is our only fundraiser. Fundraiser, right? And we do put all our concentration on that right now. So uh, that's interesting that you can yeah. raise enough money. I, I was just going to say, I believe we're a growing group right now. We have yes. wonderful person in charge of making sure that our word is getting out and mm -hmm. I think some we've had a lot of new members joining recently and I'm thinking that as that continues to happen we get larger we will have more people to put in other areas and perhaps have other fundraisers, fundraisers. or um, right how many members do you have currently money. we have about 60 working members 60 members in our mm -hmm. right group. 
-hmm. That's that's quite a bit. Yes. But, but and they not, all yes, they all chip in. Uh, and but ninety would be even better. It would. Yes, <laughs> it would be. <laughs> yes. Again, if people want to, uh, if they're curious about your organization, mm -hmm. um, what should, that, what should they do? Should they go to your website? Is that the go best thing? Go to the website has a lot of information on there. Or they can give us a call. Okay. We'll be happy to right. you know call them back and give them the information. Repeat the telephone number. The number is four zero one. 287-4392. And let us recap one more time. So the great event is happening July, July 13th, 13th at the oh. Dunes Club from 11.30 until 2.30 um, in the afternoon. The Dunes Club is located in, in, in Narragansett, Rhode Island. In Narragansett, Rhode on Island. On the water. On the water. So great views of the water. Yes. And it is a, uh, three authors are coming. Mm -hmm. Three authors are coming with their three books. And tell us again the names of the authors and their books. The authors are Michelle Hoover, her book Bottomland, then uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, her book Georgia, a uh, novel of Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, excuse me, the author is Dawn Tripp. And the mural, muralist by uh, Barbara Shapiro. Okay, and it's a, it's an interesting little uh, difference kind of books. The historical three historical right, three historical this year. novels. One about just uh, World War One. One. Uh, one on the eve of World War Two about the art scene, and three a fictionalized novel about oh. Georgia, Georgia O'Keeffe, yes. one of America's greatest painters. Yes. And uh, I have family that lives in New Mexico, and oh you, yes, and, yes. Uh, you know, where, if you go to visit them, that's of course where you have to where go you and have to go and and see and where see. she lived. Yes. So uh, it's three female writers, three female heroines. I gather it's just coincidence, but coincidence, yes. coincidence. Year, yes. <laughs> but it just feeds into this whole idea. Yes. Women helping women. Yes. Mm -hmm. Across our uh, our community, mm -hmm. women giving back to the community. Yeah. You know, so if you're thinking about the Rotary meets too often and you're a woman, you might consider the Women's Club instead. It meets a lot less often and does also good service yes. to the community. Um, this is not a lightweight group. This is a group that does everything possible to help, help. the people in yes, our community. we are from, a service club. Yes, yes From we are. the little babies leaving the hospital with mm -hmm. the little knitted hats mm -hmm. um, to our seniors or shut-ins getting, um, yes, books. getting books mm -hmm. delivered to their house so they can not only keep on reading but keep on interacting with uh, other yeah. human beings. So. And can I just say to you that we really appreciate this opportunity to get the word out. We really appreciate you allowing us on the, on the show. And uh, we couldn't have asked for a better hostess, uh, an author herself, yes. Yes, and yes, a yes. grant writer. Right. It doesn't become any more perfect than that. No, it does yes. not. No, it does not. I thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, remember, th July 13th, 13th is a magic number. It's yes. not a bad number this year. No, it's a good number. It's a good number, and it is a weekday. It's a it's Wednesday. Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Yes. So, but listen, people who are watching, try and get away from a, a long lunch. Just yes. tell your boss, Absolutely. or, or just for a good close, the, close the shop yes. for for uh, ninety minutes and enjoy the authors and doing a good thing for the community. Yes, I thank you very much for thank coming. You thank you very much. So, I want to thank my guests, and this is uh, Harriet Grayson, who is your host and your producer of Community Culture Showcase. As I said, we have a wonderful summer events coming on, and I'm so glad to participate in making you, my audience, aware of these events. This is the General Federation of Women's Clubs, their July 13th event, and we'll have many more things happening. So tune in and check us out. Thank you very much for being with me.